Okay, sports fans, we're going to apply some math to sports. Yes, welcome to the perhaps the most legendary floor in basketball, of course, the Boston Gardens. Now, for math today, we're going to be looking at the topic of inequalities. Yes, we're going to be looking at those things that are the greater than and less than signs, also known as Pac-Man symbols. You remember Pac-Man, don't you? I hope you do. All right, so for standard stuff, we're going to be looking at just solving equations with inequalities. And for challenge, we're going to look at something special, absolute value, and inequalities. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's start talking about inequalities. And the first thing that I always think about when we're talking about inequalities is good old Pac-Man. And for those of you who have played the game Pac-Man, Pac-Man's goal was to go around and to eat all the power pellets and to avoid the ghosts. And the ghosts, I think there's four of the ghosts. I think this was, his name was Binky. I could be wrong. Binky, I think. And it was a great game. Um, but for us, what's really important is that we're talking about inequalities. And your teacher probably used this to talk about how Pac-Man always ate the power pellets or the ghosts, and the inequality sign always eats the bigger number. So that was the idea that your teacher probably tried to get across to you, and we're going to build on that now that we're learning a little bit more advanced math. And we're going to be talking about basically inequalities. So things that will be like this. X is greater than 3. So again, if this was Pac-Man, Pac-Man would be wanting to eat the bigger thing, and X is the bigger thing, but how big is it? We have no idea, but we know that it's bigger than 3. So it could be 3.2, it could be 900, it could be 3.00001. Whatever it is, it's going to be bigger than 3. That's what we know. So in order to kind of show that, how we graph it is we put the number right in the middle and we put numbers on either side of it, hopefully in the same kind of uh, interval. And then we need to put some kind of thing over top of the number. So I'm going to put an open circle. So an open circle means that it's not equal to that number. And because x is bigger than 3, I need to show with an arrow all the numbers it possibly could be. So all those numbers are what satisfy the equation to substitute for, for x then. Now, if it said x is greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to, then you need to go and not use an open circle, but you need to use a closed circle. So closed circles mean equal to. Open circles mean just greater than or less than. So that's the basics of graphing. We're going to apply this idea and start doing some stuff for solving. Let's get to it. So let's just say we had uh, this kind of stuff. Um, X Actually, let's make it 2x. Uh, 2x plus 8 is less than or equal to mm, 18. Okay, let's go and solve it just like we normally would. So all the math rules that we've learned are exactly the same. So I'm going to go and just subtract 8 from both sides. And what I end up getting is 2x is less than or equal to 10. Divide both sides by 2. And x is now less than or equal to 5. If we had to go and graph it, I'd put my 5 in the middle. 6 and 4. I would use a closed circle because it's less than or equal to, so a closed circle. And x is less than, smaller. So I'm going to go this way 
with my arrow. Okay, let's uh, look at one uh, common kid mistake. So the KKM is back, common kid mistake. Dun, dun, dun. And it's when you get stuff like this. 10 is less than x. Now, what you might look at this is saying x is on the right-hand side. Well, that scares me. So a lot of kids, they want to go and say, oh, I don't like that. So I'm just going to go and say, well, x is like this. I'm just going to just switch those around. Well, that's wrong. Okay, you just can't go and do that. You've broken a lot of math rules by doing that. Can't do that. No, uh-uh. But what you can do is what I kind of call the mirror. Not the mirror mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all, but the mirror in math. So if I just kind of took this mirror, like this equation, and I mirrored it, and if I did that, and I, I would get the x over here, but it would be like this. Now this is okay. How do kids remember this? Let's go back to Pac-Man. Is the x being eaten by the inequality sign? Yes. Then over here, the x has to be eaten by the inequality sign. Now, once you've done that, it is much easier to go and graph. So this is my really big tip, is if you mirror the question, um, it reduces any kind of mistakes when graphing. Pretty helpful. So 10, 11, 9. Uh, this is an open circle, and x is bigger than 10, so I'm going to go that way. Okay. Uh, the other cool thing is if the x is on the left-hand side, just look at that. It already makes the actual arrow, doesn't it? It kind of shows you. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's get into uh, the special rules. There are special rules. Special rules, what are they, you ask? Well, let's go over them. And the special rules are nothing crazy at all. So, the first one, or really the, the only one, is if you multiply or divide at any point, you have to flip the inequality sign. So if I wanted to solve for x here, I would have to go and divide both sides by negative 2. You guys know this. But as soon as you divide or multiply by a negative, then something happens to this. You have to flip it. So. You get x, and this becomes negative 9. And then this now is not greater than anymore. It's less than. And then you graph accordingly. Now, some common kid mistakes for this one is a lot of kids think you have to have a negative answer to flip. So, uh, for instance, let's say you had... 3x is less than negative 12. Well, you would go and divide both sides by 3, and both sides by 3, and you end up getting x something to negative 4. Some kids think that, oh, it's negative. That means, you know, something happens. Well, nothing, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. You have to divide or multiply. Okay, and that's what you have to do. The other one that sometimes I've, I've seen is... If you have something like this, negative 3x is, say, greater than or equal to negative 12. When you go and you divide both sides by negative 3, you divide this side by negative 3, um, you end up getting x something to 4, right? Well, a lot of kids think that, oh, my answer is positive. Then I don't flip the sign. No, you flip the sign because you divide it by a negative number. The answer doesn't matter, it's what you did to get there. So do kind of keep that in mind when graphing those things. So that's it. 
graphing inequalities isn't, isn't too bad. You follow the typical math laws, you add in the little flipping new rule, and you're good to go. Okay, so for challenge, we'll be still looking at solving inequality equations, but this time we're going to be looking at absolute value inequalities. And what does that look like when you solve and graph? Let's get to it. So let's talk about absolute value and inequalities. A little review on absolute value. We know that the absolute value of a number, especially an unknown, there's two different possibilities because we don't know what's happening inside here. But when we know when we take the absolute value, we can get some different possibilities. X could be 5 or it could be negative 5. There's no way of knowing. So we need to be able to apply that idea to solving equations. So let's do that, shall we? When you have an equation with an unknown, you're going to get basically two possible answers. And when we're talking about inequalities, well, let's take a look and see what happens. The very first instance, and I'm going to um, literally split the screen in half and do two different questions, is when you just drop the bars and you get 2x plus 3 is less than 6. Okay, well that actually is a pretty easy question to go and solve. We're just still going to follow our rules and we'll end up getting uh, 2x is less than 3, so x is less than 3 halves. But the other one, now the other one is really interesting. There's another flip side of it, the negative version of all of this. So the negative version is when we have it not being 6, but negative 6. And if you ask yourself, hmm, what is that rule when you get something to become negative? Oh, that's right. You have to flip the sign. So we get something like this. And then we go and we solve this, which now becomes a very... Um, easy question. And when we do this, we get minus 9. So x is greater than negative 9 halves. So you get two different versions. x is greater than negative 9 halves, and x is less than 3 halves. Well, how do I write that into one awesome absolute value equation? Well, how I would go and do that, and let's just get some room here, let's get rid of this part right here, and let's get uh, one big line, oops, there we go, and I would get, I would write it like this, I'd always start with a smaller number, so negative nine halves, and I would put the variable in uh, the left hand side, and I would also, those darn pop-ups always coming on, put 3 over 2. Now I just put down the different symbols. So this says x is being eaten by the negative um, 3 halves. So I go like this. And here the 3 halves is being eaten. So, um, And there we go. That's how I would write that. Now let's take a look at uh, one more example. And it's the same kind of idea. Let's just take a look at say we had 2x minus 3 is greater than 5. Oops. So we get our two versions, the positive version. And we also get the negative version. And the negative version, you got to think of two things. Number one, I've got to flip that, and this becomes negative. And then you solve both of them. Let's just go over here. And I'm going to get, I'm going to add 3 to both sides, add 3, and I get negative 2. So x would be less than negative 1. And if I go over here, I would add 3 to both sides. And x would be greater than 4. So this is an interesting one. So you get 2, you would say x is less than negative 1 and x is greater than 4. All right, so far so good. But let's go and graph 
couple of these things now. Let's see how that would look. So if I had to graph x is less than negative 1 and x is greater than 4, so I'm going to put down some numbers here. I'm just going to make this kind of easy, 0, negative 1, and 4. x is greater than 4, so that's an open circle. And we've got an arrow going there, so it's greater than all the values there. And if x is less than negative 1, again, an open circle. If it's smaller, it would be going this way. That's a pretty cool-looking graph. Now, the earlier graph that I had, remember the earlier graph from the other question, was where I had negative 9 halves is less than x, which was less than 3 halves. Well, this is pretty cool. Now, you have all of these fractions, and kids hate graphing fractions, don't they? So I'm going to put 0 here. I can put 3 halves there, and I'm going to put negative 9 halves there. So x is, x is, let's start with this one, x is smaller than 3 halves. So if I'm smaller, I'm going to be going this way, aren't I? But x is also bigger than negative 9 halves, so it's going to be going this way. Whoa, what do we got here? We get a cool, basically, uh, something called an interval where this is the intersection that will make this equation true. It looks like a barbell, doesn't it? And it's pretty cool. Um, and these are all the values that would make that equation true. So a couple of different ways of how things look. So there's a little chat about absolute value and inequalities. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully you learned a little bit about solving inequality equations and add some added value of absolute value inequality equations. Uh, check out my channel, you can subscribe to it, and send me recommendations. Where do you want the math to appear next? Till next time.